everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is a first impression video of Lorenzo Veloresi Ferenzi. I said that in a stupid way. <laughs> but uh, it's an Italian brand and I watched a video recently of... If you're familiar with Rich Mitch the Duck, he's in a lot of comment sections. He, he interacts with a lot of people, a lot of you are friends with him and know him. And Mr. Duck has his own YouTube channel now recently where he reviews fragrances, his own fragrances in his collection and discusses perfume. If you want to subscribe to it, the link is in the description below and will be clickable on the end screen of this video as well. So check it out, but Rich Mitch recently talked about this brand. He got some samples from this brand and, and went through a couple of them. And it reminded me that I, a long time ago, many years, tested out one from this company too, uh, called Musk, because it was a fragrance that Brad Pitt was supposedly one of the fragrances that he likes to wear. And I reviewed it, and I since deleted the video because, <laughs> because I watched it back recently and was like horrified by what I was wearing. I was wearing a suit, but I'd unbuttoned the shirt down to about here. And like all of that was, it just, it didn't look good. Anyway, that's gone. Um, <laughs> but uh, Rich Mitch's video inspired me to to go back to the brand and buy some more samples because I I'd literally only tried the one. So on direct on their own website, um, you can order them from Italy. You can choose a set of your own samples of four samples. You can mix any that you like and it comes in a box. It comes in a box like that and inside that box is is this box with an envelope and in the envelope which is this you get this. <laughs> inside the envelope you get this which reads what would a scent be without an emotion? A cold landscape painted with no passion. Emotions and fragrances are two sides of the same coin. Every aspect and every detail lead to the same direction. And inside that is all these little cards, which is you get one for each fragrance, and there are the four samples. And so the cards have a lovely photography of each one. As you can tell, that one is based on sandalwood, um, and is called Sandalow. And then on the back, a little bit of a description and the note list, and then yeah, all of them that I've got a sample of. So this one, this one, and this one. And so I thought we'd do a first impressions. And I have only smelled briefly one of these so far. So one of them is not completely blind, I have to be honest. I did smell sandalo a couple of days ago because I couldn't wait, but I just sprayed it on the test strip. So we'll, we'll get into it because there's only four. I'm going to spray it on skin, one on each hand and one on the top of each arm. And so we will start off with Sandalo, I guess, because that's the one that I've already had a sniff of on paper. So we'll put it on my hand and we'll give it a go. I'll read you the notes from the card. It says a rich, refined perfume from the Indian tradition made with mice or sandalwood. I, I'm not sure how true that is, whether it actually has mice or sandalwood in or not, or just m is meant to mimic the idea of mice or sandalwood. A precious harmony of sandalwood and rose notes in an embrace of gayak wood, a poppernax, and aromatic woods and wood sap. So here we go with sandalo. This one, I think, just to point out, I think all of these ones are Eau de Toilette concentration, just to let you know. Quite nice. I like it. <laughs> Sandalwood, immediately. And you can definitely smell the rosy notes, and it's slightly a watery kind of rose. It's almost like rose water with this light sandalwood. Gayak wood is something that's quite strong, it can be a little bit smoky, it can go a little bit barbecue sauce-like, a little bit meaty. I don't get massive amounts of gayak wood in this. A poppernax is another kind of resin material that's, um, how do I explain it? A poppernax is 
the ones that I've smelled are kind of a bit darker and a bit kind of sweet. And going into kind of cat or territories of like myrrh and things like that, but slightly different kind of profile in the smell. Um, you do get a kind of resinousy vibe in this. There's something also that's a little bit fresh in this. I'm not sure if that's coming from, like I say, something like the rose, but there's a, a fresh quality, a lightness. You definitely get kind of a slight florally, watery light rose note in this. From a first impression, I would say completely unisex all year round, but I think it might struggle in cold weather. It feels quite light. It's not so heavy that you couldn't wear it in the summer. I think if you sprayed it lightly, it wouldn't be too much in the heat. Ideally, probably spring. I would say is the is the pinnacle kind of season if I had to pick one, and maybe a little bit more daytime than nighttime. In terms of like when you could wear it, I would, from the smell, it's very non-offensive. I would feel that you could probably wear it to most occasions, okay, including going to work, even in an office. Like I say, light, inoffensive. You're not going to offend anybody. It's, it doesn't feel like a beast mode, like filling up a room kind of fragrance. I think you could wear it to work very easily. At the same time, you could wear it out going to a meal, dressed in a suit, dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. I get a very easy to wear kind of fragrance from that. I think if you own something like Tam Dao or Sacred Wood by Killian, this is a little bit less, less woody in a way than those. I feel like this the watery kind of rose element in this is a little bit, at least in the opening, matched with the sandalwood and the, also the wood isn't quite as milky or as thick as those other fragrances. This is a little bit lighter but it'd be interesting to see how this dries down. It is a little bit kind of musky and a bit light but generally I quite like that one. If someone gave me a bottle of it, for example, I would definitely wear it. I think uh, very pleasant. And that one was called Sander Low. So we'll move on and spray the next one. The next one I have pulled out is called Aura Maris. Aura Maris. And there's the notes for it. And it says, a crisp citrus fragrance. The breeze brushing gently over the grass, flowers and shrubs of the Mediterranean and golden reflections of the sun rays on the shimmering sea. A fresh, lively green scent with notes of bergamot, mandarin, light flowery undertones of jasmine and narcissus. So we'll give this one a spray on the other hand. Not quite the fragrance that I usually go for, but I wanted to change. There were some other ones that may be more suited to my taste, but I felt I'd give this one a go. Oh wow, okay. Immediately I get a very natural, clean, juicy citrus bergamot orange. You, you get that juiciness of the bergamot. It's on par with things like Atelier Cologne kind of citrus is very natural, very, very, this one's sweet, fresh, juicy, very nice. You get a hint already of the light kind of florally kind of notes. A little bit more kind of white floral that Jasmine and Narcissus were li listed as the, the florals. You do get kind of a soft floral like tone already under the bergamot. But the bergamot, the citrus is juicy, it's fresh, it's clean and it's strong in the opening. It's the main focus. With this one too, there's also something a little bit, um, and maybe I'm influenced by the picture, but something a little bit aquatic or watery to it. I, like I said, I don't know whether it's because I looked at the picture first, but yeah, I can, that makes sense to me. Um, just imagine fresh juicy orange has been poured into the water and you get this kind of vibe. I would say from a first impression, summer fragrance, summer spring, daytime, casual, totally unisex, 
not particularly original. There's many, many, many fragrances that will give you something like that, um, pointing to things like Atelier Cologne fragrances. So not the most unique thing in the world. Very pleasant from a first impression though. Smells quite simple. Once this orange bergamot juicy citrus note tones down, I am a little bit worried what will be left in terms of it might be a bit flat and boring and not much there. But we'll see, I might be completely wrong, it might turn into something lovely. But the, it's overwhelmed by the citrus and the top notes, but very juicy, very fresh, very nice. I will let that sit and we'll come back to it at the end. We'll come back to all of them at the end, but we'll move on to the next one. The next one is called Donna and it is based on Rose. Rose I am quite partial to these days. I do like um, Rose now. Um, I, I had a funny relationship with Rose. I never quite used to like it or enjoy it. And then something changed and now I really do enjoy Rose. And so I picked this one. It is meant to be leaning more feminine, but because I like Rose, I thought probably wouldn't be a problem. The description reads, the epitome of femininity as narrated by the queens of flowers, Rosa Centifloria and Rosa Damascena, crowned by powdery ylang ylang and Florentine iris, with touches of jasmine and mountain narcissus, violet leaves, black currants and oriental woods. And the fragrance family is also listed on there and it's just de depicted as floral. So we'll give this a go. I do like Ylang Ylang, I like Rose, and I like Iris, so this could be a winner. It might be too feminine, we'll, we'll find out. It is quite feminine. <laughs> yeah, you get kind of a bright, fresh, more pink rose, I would say. I would be lying if I said I could smell Ylang Ylang off the top, I'm getting bouquet of like mixed roses but like primarily kind of pink smelling and I am getting slight powdery nuances yeah this is very 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 floral this is <sighs> yeah in your face fresh bright crisp pink roses a little bit powdery very kind of pretty smelling quite feminine I would say for most men it would be quite feminine. Not much else going on, very 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 focused on that bright fresh kind of pink like rose. I think the photo um, works well, kind of the mix of like slightly orange and pink roses, that's, that's really what you get. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's lovely. I would say summer and spring would be the ideal seasons for this fragrance. Um, more daytime, I would say, dressed up or casual. You could wear it in an evening. It's I, I associate evening fragrances maybe with being a little bit thicker or a little bit heavier or a little bit sweeter. And this doesn't have any kind of dark sweet notes. It's quite fresh, which is why I think of more the daytime. I would say if you're a big fan of rose, then you might want to check that out, you might really enjoy that. As it's been on my skin a little bit of a while, I would say it's it's a little bit comparable to Mask Milano Love Kills. When you first spray that one, that is also quite fresh, quite light, bright kind of rose. This has a little bit of that too. I would say definitely uh, similarities between the two musky clean to it that reminds me or could be like almost like a laundry detergent like this could be like how your clothes smell after they're being washed with a really nice like fabric softener that's like scented there's something a little bit of that in there too if i had a bottle of that i think i would definitely wear it i think that's quite nice i would enjoy that i would wear it myself although i say it's feminine i'm thinking of like the mass population of normal men so to speak and most men associate flower female if you're not a fraghead I would say it will be too feminine for you if you are into niche perfumery and your kind of noses expand and you've gone past the kind of gender kind of marketing then it's totally fine I would wear it myself I feel like it would be maybe a little bit redundant having owned Love Kills Mask Milano 
I, I wouldn't feel the urge to buy this one because the freshness of the rose is, is comparable, I would say. And that one is very singularly focused on the rose notes. So it might be a little bit redundant if you own Love Kills. If you don't and you, you want to check out a nice rose fragrance, you might enjoy that one. So we'll move on to the last fragrance. This one, I have no idea how to pronounce. Kama Surabe. Kama, Kama Surabe, something like that. No idea. <laughs> that is the, the card for it. And I'll read you the description. Kamasarabe, the perfume of pleasure, a kaleidoscope of fragrances and colours, an incredibly precious attar, piercingly delicate Indian flowers, infused with a mysterious, seductive scent of sandalwood forest and exotic woods, with sensual, enveloping undertones of leather, amber and musk. <laughs> There you go, and it's described as a woody oriental, and we'll spray it on my other arm and see how this one goes. This is the last one from the brand. Altogether, I've liked all of these. Peter, you never do good reviews. They're always bad, they're always negative. You never like anything. I like all of them so far. <laughs> Here we go. This one's my least favorite. <laughs> it's not bad though, but it's my least favorite, I would say. I definitely get the slight jasmine kind of nuances to this. It says Indian florals, it's not specific as to what florals. I get maybe even tuberose, there's, there's like a sweet white floral thing going on. No idea what the florals are, they're not listed, but I get something somewhere like tuberose, gardenia, hints of something like jasmine. It's in that ballpark, it's white floral, it smells slightly sweet. Yeah, that one's not my personal taste. I don't dislike it, but I, I probably wouldn't wear that myself. I'm just gonna go over the notes again. It's meant to have sandalwood in there, amber, leather, and musks. At the moment, I'm getting a big wall of sweet floral. That's okay, but I don't love it. In general, I would say leaning a little bit more on the feminine dial. In general, all of them I would consider unisex, but leaning on the feminine, if you're a male that thinks in your brain flower equals female it's not going to be for you like i say if you're more into perfume it's it's unisex all of them probably because they're eau de toilette but all of them have kind of a light airiness to it they're not too thick they're not too heavy on your face they're, they're a bit aerated they all feel quite easy to wear i would say this one from a first impression would be a daytime fragrance or a nighttime fragrance for spring autumn, slightly leaning more to the women. And you would have to enjoy florals to, to like this one. We'll see how it goes as that dries down. The kind of leather amber notes might come out a little bit more in the dry down. I would imagine it'll last a few hours with those florals though before it kind of turns into base notes. So that's all of them. We will revisit my hand and uh, <laughs> go over each one again and see see what's happening. So the first one was Sandalow, which was on this hand. Light, musky sandalwood. Something like a rose water where it's not too intensely rosy and it's slightly watery, just a hint of it. But very pleasant. Again, if you own things like Tam Dao, I think it's Tam Dao, the one that's Sandalwood by Diptyque, and or things like Sacred Wood, this is less less woody, less um, less creamy, less woody, and maybe a little bit more muted or more musky, more enveloped than those fragrances. And if you own those, this might feel a little bit redundant, I, I feel. that This could be a little bit more interesting. If it had some kind of... A little bit more grain to the wood. A little bit more quote-unquote woody. Maybe with some dabbles of spice or herb or just something that contrasts it a little bit. I feel like it could be better. When I smell it, I like it, very pleasant, I would wear it, but I feel 
that it could be more than it is. But when you breathe into it for a while, you do that, get that kind of, again, I keep repeating myself, but a little bit rose watery like, um, which is which is quite nice. We'll go into the next one, which was the Aqua Maris. Yeah, that bergamot is slightly toning down and it's getting more aquatic. Like there is definitely, there is definitely a musky, salty, aquatic like vibe to this. It's almost going shower jelly a little bit. There is a slight floral kind of, it's a musky, salty, aquatic -y, floral like thing going on as it's drying down. The citrus is fading off within the 10 minutes of um, 20 minutes now of filming this video. So I'd say after 15 minutes or so, the bergamot note is coming down, the juiciness of the citrus is gone. It's quite pleasant, very fresh, very clean, very out of the shower, and something that you've smelled before, it's not massively unique, but quite pleasant. If you wanna just smell fresh, juicy when you first apply it, and then just afterwards clean out of the shower where you, you smell clean and fresh, this might work for you. The next one was Donna, the, the rose perfume. Hasn't changed in the slightest, <laughs> still the same. Fresh, bright rose, ever so subtly powdery, not massively. There isn't a huge sweetness in there. I'm not sure I directly pick up Ylang Ylang. Maybe if it's on my skin longer and I smell more deeply into it, maybe, but it's kind of just mixed in with this rosy kind of accord. There is a hint of an I known slightly powdery iris violet leaf thing going on that's a bit more subtle. Rose definitely the main player in this. Again, I would say if you own something like Love Kills, might be a bit redundant. You might not need both of them. Going back to the last one. Very much focused on those slightly sweeter florals. If anything, getting maybe a little ambery. Just a little bit. But I will see how those dry down. I will probably end up, I feel like I could review these fairly quickly in a full review because they're not massively complicated in terms of I think I can describe them well without a massive video. So what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably pair them together like these two together and do a, a duo review, full review, while I review this one and this one in the same video and then review uh, the other two together in the same video and give you, you know, how it changes on my skin, how long it um, lasts for longevity projection sillage, and more kind of detailed thoughts once I've spent time with them and gone through the samples. So that's that's what I will do, um, but this is just a first impression. Generally speaking, I like all of them. Uh, this one was my least favorite, the one that I cannot pronounce the name of. <laughs> Don't dislike it, it's just my least favorite. My favorites probably, uh, my favorites probably Sandalo and Donna, but the the Aqua one, not bad. It does remind me of certain kind of Atelier Cologne kind of fragrances that start off like juicy, fresh, beautiful citrus, and then going to smelling like out of the shower, shower gel, soapy, uh, lotion-like. Um, a few Atelier Colognes kind of do that, and this um, has a similar kind of vibe. I'm thinking Clementine California is a good example. It starts off with this beautiful, juicy Clementine orange note, dries down into this kind of creamy lotion kind of, um, not quite shower gel, but like a creamy lotion kind of smell. Just very out of the shower, very clean. And, and I'm getting kind of the similar direction, similar idea with this one. So yeah, that's my first impression. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you tried them, uh, let me know your thoughts on them. Again, if you want to check out Rich Mitch on YouTube and check out his videos, he does weekly rotation videos on a Sunday and uh, he does haul, vintage hauls, although he won't be doing those for a while, I don't think, but recently he did quite a few massive hauls of buying a lot of vintage fragrances. <laughs> if you want to go back through his videos and check them out. Uh, you might really enjoy his channel if you want to subscribe and support him. I know he, he, it, would quite, it would be good for him to get the first 1,000 subscribers uh, because then he can do live streams 
but he's quite often on Eugene's channel, You Smells Good, and um, it would be quite cool for him to be able to do it on his own channel. So yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time with another one. If I don't see you, have a very happy new year, but I will be doing a video um, probably on the day just to wish you all happy new year. And uh, yeah, take care. See you soon. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.